Well, hello there. So, I finally finished my Bormac G5 Hackintosh, almost, uh, and I thought I'd make a little video for you with the finished product. So, yeah, let's just go ahead. On the outside is, like, nothing special. You can see through it, like the original one. Uh, we have the original ports in the front and also in the back except for the graphics card which has a display port an HDMI and two DVI's this one being a DVA DVI a and this one being a DVI I no sorry that's a DVI D that's digital only this one does VGA the back ports, uh, I haven't put in the antenna connectors yet, but they'll go in eventually. Uh, uh, we have our audio inputs and outputs, which don't work. This thing doesn't have a sound card. We have USB, both of them work. No firewire either, those don't work. Ethernet, which does work, and really well too and a 56k uh, modem which is connected to nothing then the original power socket of course two ventilation fans originals still there and then we have the latch for the door which let's take a look at the thing um, so as you know you open up g5 by opening the latch and then this comes out uh, this panel here giving you access to the entire machine so right here well, there I am um, let's try to avoid reflections it's using the original air baffle I am missing a uh, an optical drive I have run the SATA cable for it and it has Molex power. Also up here uh, is the Bluetooth module, which is taken out of an iMac, uh, which I'm gonna plug the antenna into. The antenna connector is behind that zip tie. We also have this hard drive, which is there uh, as a temporary measure, since I don't have any other drives, but I'll stick in a I'll probably stick in a 500 gigabyte scratch uh, disk for editing video because I actually plan on um, making proper videos, like well edited and all that. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And I plan on using an NVMe uh, SSD, an M.2 SSD into an, a PCI Express slot. Uh, so, on the inside you can see the original shields for the G5 CPUs, original fans, uh, in the original fan tray too, and using the original connector, uh, original fan in the front, and these are also there, but these are not used, I don't use them at all, uh, I don't think that this needs any cooling. So, the PCI, let's, let's take a look at the PCI area. So we have original fan tray with the three bladed delta fan, which I have extended the cable for, and it's connected to the uh, motherboard. This one actually works uh, with PW PWM control. Uh, it's the only one in the entire system, and I think it's more due to the fact that um, it's seeing the PWM as changes in voltage uh, instead of a proper PWM signal. Then we have the graphics card. This is an R9 280, a 3 gigabyte version. It is a Sapphire Dual X OC, I think. One of those gamery cards. Uh, we have our two uh, PCI Express power connectors. One of them is a 6 plus 2 pin. Here are the other two pins. 
these cables are actually like this uh, because they collide uh, with the air shield, the air baffle, if I don't like make them as flat as possible. Uh, so yeah, that's there. Those are like that for a reason. Uh, the motherboard, it's a Super Micro X8 SILF. And well, you can see there's a PCI slot, which is uh, serves absolutely no purpose on Mac OS. We have a PCI Express 8x slot, which is 8x physical, but it's a 4x, um, a 4x uh, electrical. So, eh, it's enough for an M.2 drive. Like M.2 drives only use 4x. It's 2.0. But yeah, uh, we have the chipset under here. There's a USB port, an internal USB port inside this case. Sorry, inside this motherboard. Weird. Well, I mean, it, I guess it's for like installing a hypervisor, something like that, in a server since it's a server board. Now onto the uh, CPU part of the thing. Uh, let's take the fans out. As you can see, they're using the original uh, connector. Really nice, they're the original three-bladed Delta fans, which are silent, really silent. These do not work off uh, PWM. So what I've done is I have connected them to 12 volt power and the control signal I have tied uh, permanently to 3.3 volts on the power supply. So they're always running at the same speed, but as you will see with the humongous heatsink, the CPU doesn't really care. I mean, it can even run passively, no problem. Uh, so yeah. In here, you can see this support for the for the whole CPU shield thing and the separating uh, panel thing here. Uh, you can see I have cut it over here to make space for the RAM slots and all of this is just empty since the RAM goes over there so what we do is the uh, locking pin for the I have preserved it but the locking pin for the shield is missing right now just so I can take it apart if I have any problems uh, let's remove this so it comes out just like the original like it did originally actually it is the original so it just comes out like that. Then we have the uh, bracket, which it actually supports the heat sinks too. So this uh, pushes in there with when the uh, shield is on. So that pushes in there and keeps the heat sink in place. Let's remove this too. As you can see there's nothing to it. There's just these pegs which go into these holes. In the heat sinks, there used to be another one down here since it was a dual CPU system. And as you can see, this down here is a mess, but I can afford it since I have these. Uh, as you can see, there's the original heat sink for the G5, which does a more than adequate uh, job of keeping uh, the. Uh, Xeon that's in there uh, quite cool so yeah and it would do it even better if there wasn't a shim that I had to put in between the heatsink and the CPU on the back we have the original fans I think these are Delta 2 but I'm not sure they have the original fan tray they are hooked up to the motherboard right here they go to the motherboard on that side and then they have the 12 volts and uh, the 12 volts and the 3.3 volt uh, sorry no the 3.3 volt and the ground going to the power supply connector right there the power supply of course is the original I don't know if I'll be able to shove the uh, no I won't uh, but the fans on the power supply are, you know, one of them has uh, bad bearings, uh, sorta, they're not dead yet, but yeah, I'm gonna 
need to replace that. Uh, but yeah, original power supply, completely original. The I have even used the original rubber grommets for the cables to come out. And my cat was wants something. What do you want? That's one weird. Yeah. I know she wants attention, but can't give it to her right now. Uh so Yeah, where was I? Oh, original power supply. Yeah, it's the original power supply, it's also the original panel here, separation panel thing. Um, so the original power supply actually has three uh, different 12 volt rails, which are kind of just card limited. Uh, so they are actually connected to the same 12 volt rail. Uh, so what I've done is actually joined them. I've joined them. Uh, two of the so two of them give out like 15 amps. So those I have. Uh, I think I have like used them uh, for both the CPU and the graphics card and then the motherboard feeds off the uh, 9 amp the third rail which is the 9 amp rail I think I have them hooked up that way so the uh, GPU and the CPU share 30 amps and uh, the motherboard uses 9 amps it has 9 amps uh, for itself uh, the front panel, as you can see, it's just a front panel cable from a case uh, hooked up to the front panel header, which is behind the graphics card. So yeah, the front panel, the firewall doesn't work. The power LED does, the power button does too, and the USB, of course, does too. So uh, what I've done for the front USB and the... Uh, Bluetooth, which is USB, is I have made this connector right there. Don't know if you can see it. It's this one right here, right uh, beside the SATA ports, which simply has two USB uh, lines coming out of it. And yeah, I, I used, I thankfully had some uh, black ribbon wire. So I just used that, and yeah, that's that's just hooked up to the motherboard. And I don't think there's really anything else to show you. I mean, there's the SATA cable, which is from an iMac, uh, so it looks original, and it just runs down there to the SATA port. Same with the optical drive. I don't think I'll ever put uh, two hard drives, but in the case I need to put two hard drives, I'll just use another iMac um, cable. So yeah, the temperatures are actually really good on this. Uh, well, on the CPU, not so much. The GPU doesn't get above like 70, 72, 73 uh, degrees Celsius. Thanks to having its own, you know, dedicated uh, airflow channel, which makes it, which helps it quite a bit. And I just noticed this VRM mounting clip is a bit crooked. Weird. Uh, so yeah, and the CPU, it keeps cool. I mean, it doesn't get uh, above like 80 degrees. And the issue is the heatsink can actually uh, dissipate all that heat. But the shim that's in between the CPU and the heatsink is really, really limiting the um, thermal transfer from the CPU to the heatsink. And I cannot do it any other way. I need I needed to put uh, that shim there. But it, it just, I have run it like an entire night, uh, you know, with running the famous yes and yes and yes and yes uh, command on the terminal, since this thing runs Mac OS, of course. Uh, I don't know why there's no, there's not a stress port. So there's this command line uh, utility called stress on GNU Linux. And I usually use that. And I thought there would be a port uh, for Mac OS, you know, in Mac ports or Homebrew or something. There isn't for some reason, but well, 
yes works uh, fine and yeah it didn't overheat uh, didn't throw this board likes to throw a, a little bit of a fit uh, when it overheats uh, it likes to ring an alarm literally and yeah uh, I have actually disabled the internal beeper on the board which is disabled via removing a uh, jumper over there and yeah the so let's talk about the rest of the specs I actually told you the GPU but the CPU is a Xeon X3440 uh, CPU which does 2.5 gigahertz and most of the time is it's doing 2.66 gigahertz for some reason uh, I know it's turbo boost but like uh, I thought when the CPU sensed it was hot it uh, throttled down but it doesn't it doesn't throttle a single bit then for the memory uh, I know I'm planning to use this as a workstation but I'm using non ECC memory that is just uh, for now I'll put some ECC memory so I'm using a regular DDR3 1333 MHz which is what the, the it's the fastest that the CPU memory controller will do uh, so yeah it's DDR3 1333 it's this is a 4 gig stick and this is a 2 gigabyte stick Eh, it works so yeah I think that's actually about it for this computer I'm not gonna put it back together again oh I forgot to show you the back of the motherboard with all the ports and all that it's not really that pretty it's not pretty at all actually uh, but yeah no it's just uh, the ports the original ports hot glued to the super micro board I know some people will call that sacrilege and all that but uh, yeah it's I, I hot glued them so it will be just easy to pry the glue off and remove them if needed and yeah I think that's about it for this computer so yeah thanks for watching